Hello and welcome to the demo for Koali Build, a form and workflow designer from the makers of WVUKC. My name is Lou Rivegno. I'm a business analyst with Research IT here at WVU, and let's jump right in. So here we are in Koali Build. As I said, it's a form and workflow designer. It's got full submission tracking and user management. It's ADA compliant and it works on all modern devices from smartphones to desktop PCs. Creating an app is as easy as clicking new app. Uh, for example, let's say sponsored programs wanted an app that let people request a change in personnel on a project. We can do that. In fact, I've already started it, so let's take a look. Here is a basic form that I've made, and we can look at a preview. This is a perfectly serviceable form that lets somebody request a personnel change on a sponsored program's project, but we can improve on this. So first of all, the form title, I can center it if I want to. I can add some instructions. if I want to. Then we have the principal investigator, which is just a text field. But Koali Build has a full user database that matches the database in WVUKC, which matches our whole organization user list. And we can take advantage of that. So rather than using this principal investigator free text, we can use this user type ahead gadget. Adding a gadget to a form is as simple as dragging and dropping, and you can just put it wherever you want it. So I'll put it right there. I'm going to make this a required field. I'm going to show some placeholder text just to help out our users. I'll say type name or email. And we can actually work with extra user details like email. This is very helpful for disambiguating people with common names. You can use the email address to make sure you have the right person. There we go. Now we ask for the OSP number and project title. We can request more information if we want to. So I'll just take this short text gadget, drag it right here, and ask for the KC proposal number. If I want to, I can also ask for the award number. And notice as I drag more items into the form, everything automatically readjusts itself. Down here, we ask about the nature of the request. Am I being added to a project, removed, having a role change, or making it on behalf of someone else? And then a description of the request. And we can do a little bit better than this. We can ask a follow-up question if they're being added to the project or changing the role. And we can say, my role should be co-investigator or study personnel. And we only want to see this question if they answer add or change. And we can do that. Because this question is only going to be visible when it needs to be, we can make it required. And we can say only show this question if the nature of the request is to be added to the project or if the nature of the request is to have my role changed on the project. Great. If I'm making the request on behalf of someone else, we should probably ask them who it is. So we can use the user gadget again. And we can say on behalf of whom, again, make it required. Uh, again, we can add the extra details like email address. And we only want to see this if the nature of the request is on behalf of someone else. And same for this question. And there we go. We've improved on this a bit. Let's take a look at the preview. So now if I want to, when I type information in here, it automatically pulls information from our user list. If I go over here and say, add me to the project, I get asked a follow-up question. If I say I'm making it on behalf of someone else, I get different follow-up questions. This is great. This, this uh, form is basically ready. But let's take a look at the workflow next. So we have a series of gadgets. We can do an approval, an acknowledgement, 
a notification, and we can do things like branching logic and integrate with other systems. Let's keep it simple and let's just add a couple of approvals for now. So instead of just going straight to Katie Schneller and sponsored programs, first let's ask if the PI approves. That's a person specified on the form. It's the principal investigator, and that's it. And because this is sponsored programs, and sponsored programs loves their unit level approval, we can also ask for person or persons in a role of a group on the form. That'll be the department, and the role will be the unit head. So there we go. It'll go from principal investigator to the department's unit head to Katie, and that's just based on information from the form. Of course, if we want to, we can say if somebody denies the approval, we can have some custom steps. We could put a notification in here, but let's just keep it simple for now. At the end of the process, we send a notification to the submitter and we can customize this. So instead of just saying hello, I can say hello. Submitter and I can say your personnel change request has been accepted for the project and then I can insert the project title or description of the project. That's great. Now let's think about this for a second. We do say that the person can make the request on behalf of someone else. We probably shouldn't send the notification to the submitter when that happens. We should probably send it to that person. So let's use a branch to accommodate that. The default route will be to send the notification to the submitter. And notice we can drag and drop items around this workflow very easily. Now this other route here is when we have to configure and we want to send it this way when the nature of the request is that I'm making the request on behalf of someone else. And we want to send a slightly different notification. Now, rather than make it from scratch, I'm going to copy and paste this notification, drag it where it needs to go, and then I'll just change it up a little bit. So we're still going to send it to a person specified on the form. It's the person on behalf of. Instead of hello submitter, I'll say this person on behalf of whom their display name and everything else will stay the same. So that is a full form and workflow pending approval from the sponsored programs folks. This is probably about ready to publish. And so it's just that easy to make an app in this system. Let's take a look at the workflow tester because it's a full end to end test of the system. So I get asked to assign a principal investigator a department, project title, the nature of the request, and justification. The fields highlighted in yellow are the ones that are used in the workflow. Those are the ones you have to fill out when you're using the workflow simulator. This is an example of what the email looks like when you receive an approval. So the principal investigator would receive this email. They'd click this button to begin the review. They'd be taken to the form and they could see the form and either deny, send back, or approve. If they approve, it then goes to the department. And if they approve, again, goes to Katie. And then finally, the workflow simulator is warning me that I've got a branch here. That's fine. It's going to use the top route, and it's going to send this email to the submitter. And we're done. So a few other features that are worth showing off here. When we're setting up an app, we can control the permissions for the app. I can decide who my administrators are. They have full permissions. I can say what all authenticated users are able to do. These are people who have WVU usernames and passwords. And usually we just want them to be able to create documents. So in other words, submit a form. If we want to, we can also let anonymous users submit to our form. So you don't need a WVU username and password for that. You need to make sure that you accommodate that in your form when you're building something like that. We didn't really do that. Our form is really for all user, uh, authenticated users. And then if you want, you can create custom roles. So maybe you have an application manager that you don't want to be administering and designing the app, but they should be able to create, read, update, and delete documents. I do want to show that there is pretty good group management in this system. We have a full hierarchy here. 
So within the university, there are colleges. Within the colleges, there are departments. And for each department, this list is very short because it's the sandbox, by the way. Um, within a department, we have various roles, department chair, unit head. We can add roles. We can add and remove people from roles as needed. And the final thing to show here is the document list. So here's an app that already has some submissions on it. And you can see all of the documents. If you want, you can just open one for viewing. There it is. You can toggle the view from review to status. That allows you to see its workflow history. I can see that there's a workflow status column and the time on the current step. This is very helpful for managing apps that have a complicated workflow. And I can see that this workflow is in progress, and I haven't really looked at this in about a month. So I'm going to edit this step. If I want to, I can say that the status has been stuck for a long time, so I'm just going to skip the step. And it sends a notification. There's another approval, and maybe that person is in the office this month. And there we go. There are lots of powerful search and filter tools, so app managers can manage their document list and get a lot of powerful value out of it. Uh, if you have any questions about Build, I'd encourage you to reach out to me, uh, lewis.revegno at mail.wvu.edu. I hope you've enjoyed this demo, and thank you for your attention.